Let's go into book of Daniel. I'm going to speak this morning on a title that we will title it while in quarantine. Daniel chapter 3 and verse 17. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able. Somebody say able. able. Is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. Verse 18, but if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. So this is like an example now. This is not exactly the same thing that happens to us. The king in here commands people to worship the idol that he has set up, the image that he has set up. And the punishment for not worshiping that image is you will be thrown into a fiery furnace. And these three Hebrew boys, they decided to oppose that command. The command in here wasn't to, hey, uh, isolate yourself from everyone so that epidemic will not spread. The command here was that if you are going to not worship this image, we will throw you into the fire. And of course, they got thrown into the very small place, three boys, three men, and um, fire was really, really hot there, but they made it. Jesus was among them. God was among them. They came out of it better. In fact, they got promoted. The name of Jesus got glorified. And I want to compare that to the season that many people are in right now. When they are quarantined, when they are um, isolated maybe in their home. Now the difference here is that our governors and our presidents are not banishing worship of Jesus. They're uh, banning uh, gathering of public gatherings and some things are shut down so that we can promote the health and help to recover from this epidemic faster than maybe than it's anticipated. But a few things are similar. One is we were told to, um, life kind of stopped as it happened with these guys. Many people lose their jobs as it happened with them. They just lost their jobs. And while being in that fire, there was a threat of losing life. And there's a fear that many people have. The moment somebody starts coughing, sneezing, and people are beginning to have this fear that Corona time has come and that uh, they're going to die. This week, um, I got messages from people who got infected, who have Corona. Some who are asking, some who have a whole family that's infected and they're at their home. And honestly, the threat of life, the threat of death is hanging over them. A very good friend of ours, a member of our team, uh, this week lost his father. He had a heart attack and a few hours later, he passed away. Um, I know quite a few families that this week their company laid them off and most likely will not be bringing them back and they're closing certain sectors of that business. And it's very difficult time for a lot of people. For those of you who are like, you know what, you're, you're working from home and everything is great, that is awesome. But I wanna to speak to those who are right now maybe feeling like these three Hebrew boys. You got thrown into the furnace of quarantine. You got thrown into that isolation. Your, your clients are not showing up no more because you can't have a business. Maybe one of your family members is infected right now and they had underlining issues before and you're afraid that they're not going to make it. I have a word from God for you today. The three Hebrew boys, they told this to the king. The God we serve is able. I want to ask you a question. Do you serve God? Because this right now is a big difference. Not do you believe in God, do you serve God? Because when you serve God, you have a reason not to be afraid. Because even if you lose your job, you never lose your God. Even if you lose your savings, you don't lose your salvation. Because if you serve God, something begins to happen. God, you're on God's payroll and God will take care of you. Even if you would lose your life, 
you must understand is that as a Christian for us death is asleep we're not afraid of death and death is the greatest fear it's the root of all fear is the fear of death and the Bible says we've been delivered from the fear of death it means death is something that we pass through death is not something we are afraid of we know that 10 out of 10 people will die whether it's going to be through corona whether it's going to be of old age but people will die 10 out of 10 people will die and as Christians serving God causes us to be delivered from the fear of death why because we are possessed by another fear it's called the fear of God what consumes our life is the fear of God and therefore there is no room we have no fear left for death we can't give fear to death why because we gave our fear we gave our reverence we gave our honor and we gave our worship and we gave our devotion to God and therefore the fear of death cannot consume us because we've already been consumed by the fear of God we fear God we serve God somebody say amen and so I just want to encourage you today if there is a fear of death inside of you I want you to give that fear to God I say God I want to live in the fear of God no not in the terror of God not in the panic of God but in the reverence of God that is so great there is no room for any other fear there is no room for any other fear please understand I'm gonna mention something about death death is going to happen to every person whether young or old it's gonna to happen to every person as Christians the reason why we don't fear death because death for us is a transition from our world to another one life really has three stages the first stage is the stage in the womb it's about nine months some of us got out there a little bit earlier some of us stay there slightly longer when you get out of the first stage of life it's in the womb something happens there's a lot of pain there's a lot of crying but also all of that weeping is turned into joy when you came out of the womb you cried mama cried daddy cried nurses cried doctors cried everybody cried and then it was quickly replaced with joy pictures sharing on internet life is born and you came from the womb into a bigger world it's called the earth everything is bigger see in the womb things are tight on the earth everything is larger spacious we live here for about 70 80 90 maybe 100 years we learn how to drive we learn how to we ride fly airplanes we we learn how to walk we get our own babies we build a house it's spacious and some of us maybe will be fortunate to fly into space one day like Mars and then comes a moment where this womb we have to exit this womb the same thing happens when we exit this womb it's called death everyone is crying the people who are dead are crying no well actually they're not crying they're they don't feel that everyone is crying but you know why because we're entering into a new world that has no distance has no limits imagine how would you compare the world on earth with the world in the womb how would you explain a baby in the womb about life on earth what language would you use it's not possible because this this indescribable you you can't explain there is nothing you can explain to the baby in the womb that could make sense that the life that's waiting for them that, that they're gonna grow out of this womb so that they can enter into this magnificent amazing life that's exactly what's happening on this earth right now that's why the bible says there is no way we can explain to anybody in this earth of what's waiting for us there and people who go there they come back and they say there's no language because that world is so much bigger it's so much greater that this world looks like a womb but there's only one price that we have to pay to get there it's called death what we call death heaven calls birth it's transition that's why in the new testament the book of acts when christians died they never called it death they called it sleep stephen the bible says and he fell asleep meaning in the world of God it's no longer your existence doesn't stop you just go to another one and so as Christians because we have a fear of God we don't have fear of death and when you lose fear of death 
every other fear has no grip you will feel it you won't feed it you will feel it it won't drive your life because the root of every fear in our life is the fear of death the fear of cancer the fear of die, the fear of flying the fear of driving the fear of getting married the fear of divorce the fear of being cheated on the fear of being rejected at the root of all of that is one big root it's called the fear of death and as Christians we lose that fear and we get another fear instead and the Bible says the God whom we serve the reason they had no fear of death is because there was a greater fear that was lodged there the God we serve not just the God we believe in not just the God our parents took to the church when we were kids but the God we serve so let me ask you a question if you're watching us right now do you serve God is God your Lord or he's a spare tire is he the engine of your life because right now this is the moment if he's not the source of your life it's time to repent it's time to place your trust in God not just as your insurance card but as your Lord because then the fear loses its grip it will be all around you but it will not be in you why because when the fear comes knocking a fear of the Lord answers and says this person has already been sold out to me I possess them I own them and the fear of the Lord is good fear it doesn't give you sleepless nights it doesn't give you terrors it gives you joy and it draws you closer to God because somebody say amen I want you to see this he says the God that we serve is able to deliver us but then he says this after that he says not only he's able he said he will deliver us our God is able to deliver us deliver us from what from whatever that's coming right now and maybe you are watching right now and you're afraid of of perhaps the disease that is coming to your house I want to tell you that God is able to heal you God is able to restore your finances God is able to restore your family God is able to restore your sickness and turn it into good health God is able not only God is able the Bible says God will God is able to deliver us God is able to save us and God is able to heal us I want you to see a testimony this girl was born without ability to smell certain things were disconnected in her brain that caused her not only to have asthma but not to have the ability to smell let's watch this short clip of a minute long and we're gonna come back to remind us that God is able and God will fix your eyes on the screen at first sight one would think that Olivia Harriger is just your normal teen who loves her dog but there's an exception. See, for most of her life, she hasn't been able to smell or taste anything. I didn't really realize that I couldn't smell or taste just because that was just how things were for me. People would always say, oh wow, this smells so good, or oh, this smells really bad. I just wanted to know what that was like. Olivia also had asthma. Then, one of the several specialists they had gone to discovered that Olivia's olfactory nerve was not connected to her brain, and there was nothing the doctors could do to fix it. It was the Thanksgiving Day show, and I'd recorded it and was watching it, and all of a sudden, Terry said, well, somebody's olfactory nerve is being healed. Someone else, I don't understand this, but you have some kind of an olfactory nerve damage. You can't smell so you can't taste your food well but God is restoring that joy to you again just receive it in Jesus name I was like, oh. and I was like oh my goodness that is amazing so I called Olivia and said hey Olivia come here for a second and she came in and goes what I said well watch this and so we watched it again and she goes huh and then just walked out didn't say anything nothing happened and as I was leaving, I was like, what if that was for me? What if that wasn't just for some other person? And so my dog happened to be right there. And I remember my mom was always complaining about his stench. And so I smelled him and I was like, oh yeah, he stinks. And then it kind of hit me, oh wait, I can smell. Come on, let's put our hands together for the Lord. Somebody say God is able. Somebody say God will. If you have a sickness that you're fighting right now, we want to believe that God is able. I want to believe also that God will when the leper came to Jesus and said will you heal me Jesus did not say nah see not only God is able but Jesus touched him and he said I will 
meaning I want to heal you I want to touch you because see let's just say you have a million dollars are you able to buy me a brand new car yeah but my faith doesn't rest in your ability my faith rests in knowing that you want to see if I hear somewhere that you tell other people that I want to buy Vlad a brand new car guess what happens my faith goes through the roof to ask why not because you have a million dollars it's because I know that you want to help me but imagine if you go a step further and you tell me I promise to give you a new car my faith goes through the roof why because not because of your ability not because of your desire to help me but because of your promise for me and see the Bible in here says that the three Hebrew boys knew these two things is they said God is able and God will but I have one more thing that I want to add to you is that God in the New Testament promised by his stripes we are healed the Lord is my shepherd you shall not lack he will supply all of my needs according to his riches and his glory God promised in Jeremiah 29 11, for I know the thoughts that I think of you says the Lord the thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and to give you a hope God promised see God is able somebody say amen God will somebody say amen and that God said that he will do that God is able to heal you God wants to heal you and God promised to heal you it's his name healer it's his nature to heal and it's his promise to heal whether you're facing a flu whether you're facing right now you're facing an asthma or whether you're facing some kind of an attack on your health whatever you are at whether you're over 60 or you're under 16 God is able God will meaning he wills to do it he wants to do it and God promises to do it the three Hebrew boys says God is able the God we serve is able but that's not where we get our faith from because we also know God can turn the planet into a monkey we know he's not gonna do it we know that God can drop right now a, a gold gold box in here gold rain gold dust but you know he's not gonna do it why because just because he's able it doesn't mean that he wills but the moment we find his will and then we find one more thing that not only he wills he promises you take God at his word our faith rests assured I just want to encourage you right now that God is able not only to heal you God is able to deliver you that God we serve is able to deliver us maybe you're facing depression maybe you're facing night terrors maybe there's a trauma in your life that has caused you not to be able to think straight God is able to deliver you but I'm going to take one step further and say that God wants to deliver you it is it, it's in his pleasure to see you freed from demonic chains the curses that is plaguing your life it is within his desire to see you disconnected from the things that you are connected to and can I go a step further and to say not only he wants to and he's able he promises to do that he promises to be your deliverer. He promises to be your healer. And He promises to be your peace. He promises to be your God. Let's take a moment and watch one more testimony. A surgery went wrong for this guy. He had some kind of an accident. And then they tried to do a surgery on him, but it didn't solve the problem. He came twisted to one service on the wheelchair, unable to walk, unable to move. Let's see what happens when prayer was being offered. This woman brought her brother to Alalia Ministries International, desperate for supernatural healing to come upon him after a devastating truck accident resulted in him being wheelchair bound. After a number of unsuccessful medical operations, doctors declared that this man would never walk this again. This brother is, is like this. If I check, this is what I was yes. seeing in his bed. So his spine was open like this. Yes. He can't walk. Pastor Arthur Powell places his left hand centimeters away from this man's thoracic region where this injury has resulted in complete leg paralysis. Pastor Arthur is commanding healing and we're seeing a vigorous vibration of the power of God in this man's body as the anointing moves along every disc, restoring every motor neuron. Jesus, the healer is here! Jesus!
God gives you is yours for the taking. Seven days after Maurice received his healing, he comes back to testify. Let us hear his testimony. I present to you tonight, somebody give God praise. Come on, come on, come on. Somebody give God some praise. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Somebody say, God is able. Somebody say, God will. And somebody say, God promised. If you're watching us right now, let us know what you're believing for. Because in about a few minutes, we are going to pray. We're going to pray for healing. We're going to pray for deliverance. And we're also going to pray for financial breakthrough. For those of you who are maybe without a job, and you're believing that God will deliver you from the whatever maybe poverty that you're facing or, or struggles that you're facing. Today can be the day. Right there in your house, distance is not a barrier. God can heal you of asthma. God can heal you of injuries that maybe you've achieved or you've received at work or in sports. Or maybe you're battling with certain things. Distance is not a barrier. The healings that we see happen here, today God is able to do it right there where you are watching us on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube or re-watching the service few days, weeks, years or decades later, God is able. God we serve is able and He will because He promised. Amen. Amen. Give God some praise right now. Verse 18, but if not, Can I just take a moment and talk about the faith that's but if not? <laughs> but if not now? See these three, three, three men, their faith was not just God is able. God will and God promised. They also had a plan B and this didn't undermine their faith. This faith but if not is not undermining faith. It's what do you do when deliverance is delayed. What do you do if healing is takes longer than you may be anticipated? And I love their response is they said, but if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods and we will not worship the gold image that you have set up. What they're saying, in other words, if the deliverance is delayed, it will not derail our devotion to God. If deliverance is delayed, it will not derail my worship of God. If deliverance is delayed, my devotion to God will not be destroyed. It will not be removed. They said, our bodies will die. Our spirits will still worship God. If deliverance is delayed, if healing is delayed, they said, our faith is not only so God will build a bridge over the waters of our sickness. Our faith is also there in case he doesn't build a bridge we trust him he'll build a path right through the sea our faith is the faith that God will do it God is able to do it God wants to do it but if these things doesn't happen as we anticipate our devotion our commitment our faith and our worship will still remain in the healer even if we don't see the healing in the Savior even if we don't see the salvation in a deliverer even if we don't see the deliverance but if he will not see that kind of faith my friend is dangerous faith because see devil is scared of that kind of faith because that faith says though he slay me I will trust in him that kind of faith says is that I know in who I have believed that kind of faith says I know my God I know my God and in him we live in him we move and have our being that kind of faith is a dangerous faith hallelujah I like what Rich Wilkerson said last week is he said fear says what if faith says even if Bill Johnson said faith doesn't deny problems existence it denies a problem a place of influence see faith is not if God God will heal me and if it doesn't happen that's it I lost God no 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 see faith is never connected to healing it's connected to a healer faith is never connected to an answer it's connected to God faith is not connected to a miracle it's connected to a miracle maker faith doesn't connect itself to the promise it connects himself to him 
that person of God that even if that promise is delayed even if that miracle is, is got lost somewhere on the way to my life my faith is linked to God so even if it will not my faith got anchored in God and God never fails God's Word never fails and therefore my faith cannot fail because my faith is not in faith my faith is not in a miracle my faith is not in an answer my faith is not in breakthrough my faith is not in healing my faith is not in God answering me my faith is in God that's why Jesus always said believe in me he didn't say believe in what I can give you he didn't say believe in what I can bless you with believe in me I don't fail I rose from the dead I reign supreme I made the heavens and the earth I am God Alpha and the Omega beginning and the end I am that I am believe in me my friend I want to challenge you this morning even if the deliverance doesn't happen faith throws its anchor on the deliverer and says he'll pull me out even if the healing doesn't happen faith throws its anchor on the healer even if the breakthrough is delayed faith throws its anchor on the one who gives the breakthrough otherwise what's going to happen is this one delay something doesn't go as we planned something doesn't work out as we prayed for and our faith is shaken our devotion is derailed we lose our devotion we lose our worship we lose our, our awe our love and our passion for the Lord why because when the faith is shaken your worship slips you lose your worship you lose your relationship to God you quit church heard of a person who prayed for somebody told his whole family prayed for his was a, a son was praying for his father he was facing cancer told his kids our God will heal our dad everybody was hyped up passionate praying for it until the father died took the Bible threw it away and he became an atheist why because of this 18th verse wasn't established the faith was anchored in healing but you have to throw your faith in the healer so in case the healing is delayed the healer will get you through everything and anything when we were on the vacation me and my wife went for a walk with this wonderful couple and they were they were prayed for for healing i'm not going to mention the things that they were battling with and everything was good for a few years and then the sickness came back came back kind of worse and they asked me questions why what is what is happening with us and i told them something that i think shocked them i said the more healings i see the more questions i have about healing not answers the more deliverances when I was younger I had all the answer, I had all the answers about healing I knew everything about deliverance the more deliverances I see more questions I have about deliverance not answers and I said I, I have a lot more questions they asked me the questions I said I have more questions that you have and it's not because I don't we don't see the healings it's because in life things don't work out black and white as we always think things should be there are cases that that sometimes we just don't know of why certain things are happening and that's why our faith has to be not in healing in a healer our faith has to be not in deliverance but in a deliverer our faith has to be not in redemption from this situation but in the redeemer job did not say i know my redemption is coming he says i know my redeemer lives paul says i know who I believe in. Paul did not say I know what I believe in. It's true. He knew what he believed in but there are situations what you believe in will be shaken and therefore your faith must be in who I believe in. In who I believe in even if it will not. He said our faith will not be shaken. Our worship will not disappear. Why? Because we anchor our trust not in the miracle, not in the answer but in the character of God. Oh, Jesus. Whew. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. I wrote this down yesterday. Sometimes God delivers us from the fiery furnace. Other times He just makes us fireproofed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes He gives us a bridge over the troubled waters. But even, even if not, faith is the path that will get us right through it. 
faith holds on to God fear holds on to life faith holds on to the healer but faith that will not pass through the trials and the struggles is the faith that holds on to healing I just want to encourage if you are there and maybe you prayed for deliverance pastors prayed for you your leaders already took you through the all of the things that you need to you need to go through maybe you've read break free and they shall expel demons and every book by Joyce Meyer about renewing your mind and maybe certain attacks are still lingering maybe certain things are still kind of there can I just encourage you right now can you put your faith from a miracle to a miracle maker can you declare with these boys with these men even if not can you get the even if not faith even if it's delayed even if it doesn't come as I expected even if it doesn't come when I expected even if it doesn't come how I expected it oh great king our devotion my Bible reading my church attendance my joy my love for God doesn't change because see pleasure that a princess comes from this flesh happiness comes from the soul but joy comes from your spirit my joy is still gonna be there my worship is still gonna be there even if I lose my job I will not lose my joy I will not lose my peace I will not lose my righteousness even if I will die I will see Jesus face to face even if certain things will happen I will not stop worshiping God because somebody say amen while and what happens is of course uh, their faith proved that God did not deliver them from the fiery furnace instead God chose to deliver them through the fiery furnace they got thrown into it and I want to talk right now in the conclusion just a few practical steps what do you do when you're quarantined what do you do when you're thrown into that furnace few things I want to underline if you're taking notes right one is don't go there alone the three boys went there together three musketeers uh, they did not get thrown alone they went three together if you are right now at this season where a lot of things are shut down some of you are in states where you cannot get out of the house can you be with your family be with your two other three other siblings under 10 though no no no. I'm not talking about that you finally father like oh finally kids are home <laughs> let's get the garage painted <laughs> Let's fix the sprinklers. Everybody's home. Can you be together? If your family is in a different state, take this time to reconnect with your family. Take this time to build community. Yeah, not with the friends on Facebook, not with the friends or followers on Instagram, but with real people who actually have real faces, real identities, and they're not just names, they're real people and they're sitting across the table from you. This is a good season to spend time with the family this is a time where we are forced to sabbath every single day you know last week uh, me and my wife um, decided in our state we don't have the law yet that you cannot get out of the house and so we started to go for walks every single day uh, me and my wife and um, Jacko and, and Saul who lives with us and it was so refreshing it was so renewing every single day taking an hour and just spending time together these three men went to the furnace together and so you gather your three maybe two maybe you have five people in the family and those of you precious Russian people who have 16 kids I don't know reach out to the local authorities figure out how you can still do that with the president's um, recommendation of under 10 but I'm pretty sure God will give you grace and so but if you're under 10 listen meet with your family play some games read the Bible together be with your family spend time with your family I'm not talking about everybody on their phones but spend time being with your family it's a good thing to be with your family two or three are gathered in my name Jesus says I am among them and these three guys were there and they were there together something happens when you are in unity it's easier to fight fear depression anxiety and disappointment something happens when you come together even if all of you right now are struggling financially the presence of you together helps you to fight the fear fight the, the anxiety fight the thing of what's gonna happen to us bring your family together mom and dad get the kids out of their rooms 
they don't they don't need to spend three four hours on TikTok and on Snapchat or Instagram get them together read the work together cook something together do something together as a family watch a movie rewatch a sermon do something with the family three boys went together and they went into that furnace watch this they didn't say king we're not going they went in that means if the president if our governor said we need to go to the fiery furnace let's go let's go with our families don't just simply say no man i'm just gonna stand against that i rebuke the devil that's not the devil in this case the king was bad and the three boys said we're ready throw us in they went together that's number one number two i want you to notice that happened is when they got there they got loosed from their chains they went there bound they got out loosed the second thing that i want to say when you are together with your family when you are on a lockdown in your house don't let the robe of fear bind you loose yourself from the robe of doubt from the robe of unbelief loose yourself from the robe of what's going to happen to us we're gonna lose our job. Loose yourself from the rope. If one of the if one of your siblings is sneezing or if one of your siblings is coughing, loose yourself from the rope. That's it. That's it. We're gonna die. Loose yourself from the rope of fear. That what's happening right now on the news, what's happening right now in the stores, what's happening with toilet paper, what's happening with all of these restrictions on our communities could unintentionally I don't think the president the governor and our authorities and health uh, health people they're not doing that intentionally but the the enemy can use the facts to bring fear into our life and when we are alone in the furnace we have to be loosed from fear let fear be outside but it cannot be inside of our house in our house fear has no place that means in our house we have love we have peace and we have joy in the holy spirit in our house we have the presence of god in our house we have the joy of the lord in our house we have faith in our house we have victory in our house we have hope in our house we have future in our house we have light in our house it's not a place of darkness in our house you turn to your children and say we're gonna get through this you turn to your spouse and says this too shall pass you turn to your other person you say yes we might have to live tight for a little bit but we will get through this we will be loose from our bounds loose from our chains somebody say amen somebody say amen we're gonna be loosed doubt and unbelief are not the same it's okay to feel doubt as a Christian it's not okay to believe or have unbelief I like what somebody said or maybe I said that a long time ago <laughs> They said, when, 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 you, when you quote somebody for the first time, you said, this particular person said it. The second time you said, someone said. And the third time you said, I said. <laughs> this is probably more than the third time that I mentioned this. Doubt is the, is the absence. Uh, doubt is not the absence of faith. It's the questioning of faith. Doubt is questioning what you believe. Unbelief is determined refusal to believe doubt is a struggle faced by a believer unbelief is the condition of an unbeliever doubt says I can't believe I need proof unbelief says I won't believe in spite of evidence doubt is honest unbelief is stubborn doubt is looking for the light unbelief is, con is content in the darkness doubt is born out of troubled mind and heart unbelief is act of the will it's okay to doubt but we have to loose ourselves from the chains of unbelief. And our house has to be a place of faith, of God's love. Our place of work where we are at has to be a place where we carry the light and the love of Jesus Christ. And the world needs this more than ever before. Because when the world is dark, they need the light. And that light, my friend, is right there when you are closed in in your house loose yourself from fear maybe the business is slow maybe the kids are out of school <laughs> so somebody said that if the scientists don't find a cure the parents having all their kids at home will find a cure because <laughs> they're so happy they want they want to get their kids quickly back to school and so the cure will be found but for us we're not waiting for a cure to find our joy our joy is in Jesus. Our joy is in, 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 in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so loose yourself from fear. Don't walk in fear. Don't think fear. Don't speak fear. 
loose yourself from there but I want you to see another thing that happened the Bible says in Daniel not only that verse 21 it says but these men were bound in their coats and their trousers and their turbans and their other garments and were cast into the middle of the furnace of fire verse 24 the king says did we not cast three bound in the midst of the fire they answered and said Lord yeah, true O king look he said I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire go together be loosed from your bounds uh, with, with that said don't get bound right now it's easy to have a lot of free time as a young person and get yourself bound in pornography because you have so much free time and you get yourself bound by entertainment where all you do is you watch things that entertain your flesh in the fiery furnace don't get bound get loosed do not let this time be a time where you get out of it and now you have depression now you've gained 30 extra pounds now you got a porn addiction now you have an alcohol addiction because you started to sip every single night do not let this time bind you let this time be loose at this time loose yourself that means you simply you get up still early and pray you read the word you simply you resist the temptation when you have more free time take time to read the word of God take time to pray take time to listen to the books take, take time to be loose don't be bound by this time because this time will pass they will be you will be stepping into a new season but do not get bound at this time be loosed at this time somebody say amen number 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 three the Bible says they walked watch this not only they got loosed they started to walk in that furnace now there was not a lot of uh, room there um, maybe it's like a, this stage so not a lot of walking back and forth but they were walking see what caught King's attention is not only that they were free it's the fact that they were walking so what I want to talk about right now is this is while you are on the lockdown start to walk meaning work on the things you did not have time to work on before this which projects were laid were held back because you were busy which books needed to be read but you just did not have time which toilet is still leaking in the house which sink is still leaking at the house which sprinkler is still broken which book that's supposed to be somebody needs to start writing it and it's laying there which song needs to be written which project needs to be completed which blog needs to be started which idea needs to be implemented begin to walk not only be loosed but also begin to walk now you might not have a lot of space but you do have the time and begin to walk why because before you can walk out you have to learn to walk in you have to learn to walk in this is a good moment right now like for me I made it a goal before they lift the quarantine I'm gonna finish the book so each day now I have a little bit more time to write the book because the gyms are closed praise God <laughs> the gym took so much time and now I, I have more free time and then we have things that we are uh, creating right now systems even in the church for discipleship we have a little bit more time why because this is the moment not only to be loosed from fear and not to be bound by sin but this is the moment to begin to walk this is the moment to begin to create certain things that you've had on your heart you just had no time begin to walk somebody say amen don't touch your neighbor but tell your neighbor begin to walk that your family members say begin to walk even right now in the in in the living room begin to begin to walk some of you you need to paint that garage that's your walking this is the time you need to plant that garden that's your walking you need to start that block that's your walking you need to begin to do that thing that you wanted to do that's your walking for some you need to clean that garage to clean that car that's your walking begin to walk this is the moment not to sit and get fat but get up and do something not to sit and get lazy and become a couch potato but begin to walk begin to do something begin to read begin to write begin to listen begin to walk create something begin to walk somebody say amen, amen. the bible says they were beginning to walk and then this is what happens the, the the king said this they were walking in the midst of the fire and they were not heard and the form of the fourth is like the son of god can I mention the next thing is Jesus is with you right there where you are at right now I had this situation one time and I asked God for answers 
why did you allow this to happen why was this not resolved like I thought it would be resolved and I even had prophetic words that helped me to have a certain expectation and it didn't work out like that and as I prayed I said Lord give me an answer Lord give me an answer and I never got the answer and I felt the Holy Spirit said he says I never gave Job an answer of why his suffering came I gave him my presence Joseph did not get an answer why his brothers rejected him but he always had God's presence with him and I just want to tell somebody right now David says in in Psalm he says though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death when God doesn't give you answers he gives you his presence when God doesn't give you answers he gives you his peace and so while it's good to ask for an answer it's good to say God give me an explanation God you need to tell me why but what I want to tell you this is don't let your why stop you from receiving his presence and his peace because in here it does not say that Jesus gave them an answer of why this happened he just showed up see God does not owe me an answer but I need his presence some things will be only explained on the other side of the eternity but right now what I need is I need his peace and I need his presence and the Bible says is that Jesus was just God was just there when you don't get an answer or an explanation rely on his presence last and we're gonna pray and that is this the Bible says the king asked the boys the men the young men to come out and when they came out the king started to praise God and then the king the Bible says he did this and the king promoted these guys in the province of Babylon I want you to rise if you're at home keep sitting it's okay remember God is able God will God promised but even if not if your deliverance is delayed don't let it derail your devotion to God if you are in quarantine right now I want to encourage you spend time with your family I want to encourage you as a pastor be loosed from fear and don't get bound by sins of alcohol sins of pornography and sins of entertainment and sins of just just be drowned with all of that be loosed from that and begin to walk don't get stuck walk if you get stuck you're gonna stink but if you walk if you're gonna begin to get proactive whatever you can do in your house in your yard on your computer begin to do something that you couldn't do before because you didn't have time something begins to happen one day you will walk out but I just want to remind you right there where you are at in the midst of getting the phone call that your job no longer exists that you're not gonna get paid for next 40 days and you don't know maybe how you're gonna pay for your bills Jesus is there he might not give you an explanation but he's giving his presence he's giving you his word and I have a word for you God will use your story to bring him glory God will glorify himself in your life it's not just about your kids your job your business and your career it's about God's fame and God will get the glory once you come out of this you're gonna have a better job once you come out of this you're gonna have a better resources that will be coming in I believe things will turn around for our better and we will look at this moment and we will say you know what this is where a lot of stuff was birthed a lot of stuff was rethink we had to revalue certain things now we save money differently we spend money differently now we invest things differently now our discipleship in church is different because we had to kind of reevaluate different things and God will not only promote you but God will promote his name hey this is Pastor Vlad and thank you for watching this sermon please click on the subscribe so that you can be a part of our Hungry Generation YouTube community. And click on the bell as well so that you can be notified when we upload the new sermon. Thank you for watching and God bless you.